Hello, everybody. We're going to give it another 30 seconds or so, and then we're going to get started with our webinar tonight. Thanks for uh, jumping on. And uh, sit tight, and we'll get started in about 30 seconds. Mark? <laughs> Okay, one or two more people joining. And uh and we're almost ready to go. Mark. Okay, well let's get started. It's the top of the hour and uh it's a pleasure having everybody here. Thank you for signing on tonight to the Gildan Esprit de Chie Lakeville Duathlon Triathlon Countdown to Race Day. It's really exciting. We're getting close, and uh, we're going to share some great information with you today as we walk through this deck. Um, so let's just get right to it. Hopefully you can see my screen. There is a chat feature there on your menu, and if you'd like to um, send any type of message, please feel free to do so. And that way we can communicate. And if you will, please put your phones on mute so we don't hear any background noise. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And this program is being recorded, so you can refer back to it or send it to your friends or training partners who may have missed this particular webinar. So let's get right into it. What are our objectives today? Uh, first of all, we're going to provide information to make your race day a great experience. Then we're going to answer some race-specific questions, whatever questions you need to be answered. You have the team on this webinar right now who can provide that information for you and then provide up-to-date information regarding upcoming Lakeville duathlon and triathlon course and race day logistics. All right, I hear some background noise, and if you could put your phones on mute, that would be fantastic. Thank you for that. So let's talk about, or let's introduce ourselves. My name is Troy Jacobson, and I am the Senior National Director for Endurance Sports Training at Lifetime Fitness. And it's, uh, again, once again, a pleasure to be here with you all and to talk about preparation for triathlon. And then also with us is uh, Kelly Donahue. Kelly, you want to introduce yourself? Are you on the call? Yes, absolutely. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We're excited to get you guys race ready and feeling confident to come into the Lake Villa Sprishi with with confidence and excitement. So I'm um, the local race manager here in Minnesota. So I've been with the event all four years, and it's been really fun specifically to see this event go from just 200 people all the way to 1,000 women. So it's a really fun event, um, and it keeps growing every year. That's amazing, absolutely amazing. And Abby, are you on the call? Hey, everyone. Thanks, Troy, and thanks for everyone who's jumping on tonight. You know, I've had the pleasure for working for Lifetime Fitness about the last four years, and uh, it's truly been a joy as I've switched working under a Esprit de and we're just really excited to host everyone here at Lakeville here in a couple weeks. All right. Well, thank you for that. And again, everyone, we have the A team here. So if you have any questions about the race, any logistics, um, anything, anything training related, whatever it may be, um, be sure to ask. And we're going to reserve our question and answer towards the end. But you're certainly welcome to uh, type in a question and we'll respond. So feel free to use that feature. All right. Let's walk through our deck here. Uh, first thing we're going to do is talk about race preparation. And um, we have a T minus one week. So we're a couple weeks out, but we're going to talk about as you get closer because in, in, in reality, this is a key time period in which to get your body really ready for that race day experience. Um, it's possible if you time it properly to come into the race with a super high level of energy and motivation to have just an incredible performance. And we call that a peak, peak performance in the world of coaching and endurance training. 
And um, what you're doing now in this last couple weeks leading up to the race is you're doing something called tapering, which means you're reducing your training workloads a little bit. And what that does is it enables your body to get stronger and to reach peak form. So if you time it properly, you will actually come into the race on race morning feeling just incredibly fantastic and have a great race experience. So um, let's go through these bullet points. Focus on rest. It's taper time. So that last week leading up to the race, it's really important that you rest when you can. I mean, and that means when, when you can sit down, sit down. Don't just stand up because that actually creates fatigue, believe it or not. So sit down as much as you can. Um, if you can lay down, that's even better, believe it or not. You know, professional triathletes the week before a race actually do a, take a lot of naps. And I know for a lot of you on this call, that's probably not a possibility, but um, that's what they do. So make sure that you're sitting a lot and just really relaxing and allowing your energy levels to really build up. Train in your race kit. So sometimes people buy a really nice new race kit or race outfit, like their tri-team kits by Volet, for example, and um, they put them on the night before the race or race morning, and they go out there and they race, and they find they don't fit properly or something is wrong. That's not a good idea. In fact, that's a general overall statement. You never want to experiment with something on race day. You always want to use it prior to the actual event itself. So, um, you know, make sure that you do that. Make sure that you wear your race kit in advance, you're comfortable with it, and you can make changes in advance as well. Um, if a wetsuit is allowed, and I am not yeah. certain of lake temperatures, Kelly, do you want to elaborate on that? Will wetsuits be allowed? Yes. So this is actually um, in a pool. So the swim will be okay. in the outdoor and the indoor pool at the Lakeville Lifetime Fitness. But because it's May, um, the outdoor pool will probably be a little chilly. So we are um, using our standard wetsuit um, legal temperatures. So we will be allowing wetsuits and, you know, we recommend it if, it's, if you're going to be outside. Yeah, absolutely. You want to make sure you're comfortable out there. Not to mention a wetsuit makes you buoyant, actually swim a little bit faster. So definitely, uh, if you have a wetsuit, bring it. If not, uh, you, you should be fine, but uh, you'll see a lot of competitors actually wearing the wetsuit. And typically, um, in most cases, you'll see sleeveless, and in some cases, you'll see long sleeve wetsuits. So we can talk about that more as well towards the end. Another piece here is running your race shoes. You want to make sure that you have your shoes broken in before the race because if you don't people find they get blisters and you just don't want to have a bad experience so make sure that you actually run in your race shoes and you're really comfortable with those shoes so I would suggest actually uh, whatever shoes you'll be wearing there on race day start using them now in training do some race pace work we also call these pickups or sharpening for the race race pace work is where you actually pick up your pace a little bit and push yourself a little bit and that does a lot to prepare your body to, if you want, to go faster. Now, if you don't want to go faster, that's okay. But, again, try to do a little bit of race pace work. Whatever your anticipated goal pace is, um, do a little bit of training as you lead into race day so that you remind your body what that feels like, okay? And I already mentioned the importance of reducing training volume. So if you're used to training, say, eight hours a week or six hours a week, you want to start reducing that by about a third this week, and then again another third or so next week. So you come into race day really well rested and peak, in peak form. Eat for performance. Well, you should be doing that anyway, right? We all want to make sure we're maximizing our nutrition, eating foods that are really good for us, and, and fueling our bodies for peak performance. So if you, if you haven't been doing that, um, certainly make a point to do that now as you head into race day. Hydrate often. Um, again, this is really important because you don't want to come into the race dehydrated. In most cases, we're not going to have an issue this time of year. It's fairly early, and it could be hotter and maybe humid, but um, in most cases, it'll be fairly comfortable. But uh, certainly on hot days where the humidity is up, you need to really focus on your hydration leading up to the event itself. Go over your race day strategies. So this is something that is really important that you Go into the event with a plan. You know, how are you going to tackle each event? What's your pacing going to be like? Um, how are you going to start the swim? Are you going to start off with a sprint? Or are you just going to settle into your pace? How are you going to get on the bike? Um, are you going to go into an easy gear on the bike? 
so that you can hop on the bike and you don't get stuck in a big gear, which some people do sometimes. So you want to make sure you're in a really easy gear when you start that bike. And then what your cadence is going to be. Is it going to be a low cadence where you're mashing a really heavy gear or a higher cadence where you're spinning your legs, getting your legs ready for the run? And then for the run, you know, make sure that you know your pacing with that as well. Some people will schedule walk breaks, and that's fine. You know, skip, run a little bit, walk a little bit, run a little bit, walk a little bit. It's all about what's your, in your comfort level and what you're prepared to do. But have a plan. And if you have any questions about that, um, ask a friend who's done other triathlons and has some experience, or, you know, certainly you can work with a coach who will give you a plan to work with as well. Um, employ visualization techniques, and what that means is think about the race process. If you think about the race process in advance, you're going to have a much better experience out there on race day. So elite athletes will actually go through the entire race process in their mind's eye before they even touch the starting line. So have an idea of what it's going to feel like to do the swim, to do the bike, to do the run, and go over the process in your mind, what it looks like to do the transition. That's called visualization. So you do that in a quiet area, you just close your eyes and you think about the process. And if you've never done a triathlon before, I would suggest that you watch some triathlons um, on YouTube or there's different DVDs out there available and just get a sense of what it looks like to do a triathlon or a duathlon so you have a good sense of what you'll be doing out there on race day and you're not just running around thinking, okay, what do I do now? What do I do now? So try to try to educate yourself um, get that picture in your mind's eye and do some uh, visualization. And then finally, one theme that I really want to stress to everybody is to relax. I mean, come on, this is fun. This is recreation at, at its finest. This is meant to be fitness, recreation, having fun with your friends, and maybe pushing yourself a little bit, and maybe being competitive, who knows, depending on what your goals are. So relax, have fun, and have confidence that you can do this. All right, let's talk more about our T minus. And right here we have T minus 24 hours. That's also a critical time period. You know, sometimes I talk about T minus 72 hours, T minus 48 hours, but we're going to go right into T minus 24 hours that day before the race itself. So one thing I want to stress is the importance of having a normal morning routine. Remember, you don't want to change a whole lot in your normal pattern. You just don't want to do it. You want to make sure that you follow a normal schedule that's comfortable for you, that you enjoy, that you feel good about. So if you wake up early, fantastic, because you'll probably be waking up early on race day. Um, if you need to wake up earlier than normal, my suggestion would be to set your alarm earlier throughout the week so that waking up early on race day is easy for you to do. So consider that. Uh, normal, normal morning routine means breakfast. You know, when do you eat? your breakfast and what you have for breakfast, you don't want to make big changes as to as far as what you have for breakfast. You know, you don't want to um, normally have cereal or oatmeal or whatever it may be and then make a change to eggs and bacon on race morning. Not a good idea. Not a good idea anyway, but certainly not a good idea on race morning. So you want to make sure that you're eating foods that you're comfortable with and that your body can digest easily. Um, even really important things that we sometimes oversee, but going to the bathroom, I mean, it's really important. Uh, you, you, you know, you'll you be there race morning with a lot of other people, and you'll have the porta potties there, but you want them to have your normal routine dialed in in every respect. Um, so keep that in mind. And one more point I want to make is make sure that you, um, that you, um, uh, if you're a coffee drinker, you know, make sure that you, you drink coffee on the morning. But if you're not, don't add that to your schedule. That's not a good idea. Okay, so we're talking about the day before race day. So let's talk about registration. Um, you go to registration, and Kelly's going to talk about that in greater detail and give you an idea of what that's all about. Um, but get in there and enjoy the expo. Just really have a good time. And again, you want to make sure that you're resting the day before the race. Stay off your feet, but do a little bit of light training, okay? Um, do, do a little bit of light work that we call sharpening. And that might mean you do get on the bike for 15 minutes and spin your legs out. Then you run for 5 or 10 minutes, and then you get in the pool for a few minutes. Something to get your body going because you've been used to training. You don't want to go into the race super cold. So the day before, make sure you do a little bit of training, not to be tired, but just to stay loose. Stay off your feet as much as possible. Eat light all day 
and hydrate well. We already talked about that. Prepare your gear. Don't do that race morning when you're anxious and it's hectic. Make sure that your gear is set up and ready to go the day before. Take your time. Lay everything out. Get your water bottles ready. Whatever you need to do, make sure you do it. Um, I never forget a few years ago I did Ironman Hawaii, and uh, I, you know, here I am, somebody who's done that race a bunch of times, been racing now for 25 years, and I forgot my water bottles um, to get them ready. I forgot to get them ready. I couldn't believe it. It's such a rookie mistake, but it happens. So have a checklist and make sure you get everything ready. Prepare your gear. Visualize your race. We talked about that. Keep your mind still. You know, again, day before the race, just hang out, relax. Do whatever you can to reduce your stress levels so that your body and your mind are really prepared to have that excellent experience. And then again, relax. You can do this. You need positive affirmations all the time. Remind yourself, you've done the training. You are ready to have a great experience. All you need to do is go out there and execute and have fun. Okay? So just stay relaxed. And then sleep. And I put a little question mark. I put that because usually the night before a big event or a stressful experience, people don't sleep very well, and that's okay. You know, research shows that if you get adequate sleep leading up to the days before the event, the night before that night before the event, you'll be fine, okay? That's why it's important that all week you want to make sure you're trying to get that seven to nine hours of sleep if you can. And then if you don't sleep well the night before because you're nervous or you have to get up really early, then no worries. You'll be fine and ready to go. Okay? So let's keep stepping through the deck here. So I mentioned equipment checklist, and you want to make sure all your stuff is prepared the day before, but let's go over that. Here's a very simple checklist that we you can use. There are several others online that you can find and download. Um, certainly this one is, is going to be effective. So for the swim, what are you going to bring? You're going to bring your swimsuit. Um, you're going to bring your You'll have your swim cap, which is going to be provided, of course. Bring your goggles, and that's another thing. Make sure your goggles are the goggles that you use in your training. You don't want to get a brand new pair of goggles and wear wear them uh, on race day because they might leak. So make sure that you're used to using those goggles in practice first. Um, wetsuit or swim swim skin, and in this case, some of you may be using a wetsuit, and that's great. Another piece of equipment you may want to use is a tri kit. The tri kit, as some of you might know, or tri apparel, is apparel that's designed for swim, bike, and run. So I really recommend it because not only do they look cool, but they're also functional across all three sports. You swim in it, then you bike in it, then you run in it. So and it's designed to be comfortable in each area. Um, so make sure that um, if you're going to get your your tri kit you know, get that in advance, as we had mentioned. Then for the bike, let's talk about the bike. Uh, obviously, you need a helmet. You need an approved helmet for safety reasons. And, and most, all, in fact, all modern helmets nowadays are, uh, are likely to be approved. So don't worry about that. That's going to be, but it's important to have your helmet. And, and it's important to keep that chin strap buckled when you're on the bike. Um, that is, I believe, a disqualification if your chin strap is unbuckled on the bike because of the safety concerns. So make sure that that chin strap is always buckled. Um, shoes, you know, some of you will be wearing your running shoes or tennis shoes on the bike, and that's great. Some of you will be wearing clipless pedals, but remember to you bring your cycling shoes. Bike and tri shorts, again, uh, you can use your tri kit, or some of you may use a bike short, um, so that's up to you as well. Flat repair bag, tire, tire lever, CO2 cartridges. You know, that's something you want to be somewhat self-sufficient out there on the course. So if you do get a flat, you know, you can um, change your tire and continue on with your race. Um, Kelly, will there be neutral support out there on the course if they get have run into a technical problem? Yeah, we will have um, a van kind of roaming around. If something does happen, um, you get a flat and either you want it fixed, we will have that. Um, or if you just want to go straight to the run, get a ride back, we will um, have a sag, egg, uh, sag wagon at the end of the race. Okay, fantastic. So you're going to be taken care of out there, just so you know. There's a lot of support out there for you, uh, but I do recommend that you're self-sufficient as much as possible. So if you do run into a problem, your day is not ruined, um, and you can change your tire. If you don't know how to change a tire, you still have time to learn, and it's really easy. It's super, super easy. So think about going into your local bike shop 
and just say, hey, can you show me how to change the tire? And I promise you the mechanics will be more than happy to take five minutes and show you how that's done. Um, wear your sunglasses because you don't want bugs in your eyes. And, and you, the other reason you wear sunglasses is the stress the sun can place on your eyes. And so you want to reduce that stress. So wear your sunglasses out there. And let's talk about the run. So on the run, you have your race belt, which is where you pin your number. Just a really convenient way to uh, pin your number on and put your race belt on. Your running shoes with maybe quick laces. And the quick laces are these super convenient triathlon-specific um, tools where basically you can put your shoes on really quick and the laces are elastic or some other function, and boom, they're on and you're off and running. Uh, as opposed to having to tie your laces, that just takes additional time. You can do that, but you'll see a lot of folks out there with their quick laces. And wear a hat or a visor. Um, I love wearing a visor. I prefer that. Some people like wearing a hat with that's mesh. Um, but do that again so to uh, cut down on eye stress. Um, you don't have to, but a lot of people like to wear a hat or visor out there when they're racing. And in the transition area, bring your towel or a mat so that you can have an area that defines your transition setup. So a lot of people take a towel and lay it out next to their bike, and that's where they put all their gear. Okay. And again, I know we're not the, the scope of this uh, webinar is not to go over transitions or anything. Um, but if you have, you've never done a transition, make sure that you. Uh, Check it out, some videos. Check out some videos on YouTube so that you can uh, see what that looks like, okay? And there's lots of education and training videos on how to do a transition properly. Um, extra water bottle just so you can hydrate. You know, you have a water bottle on your bike, but make sure you bring an extra one just so you can hydrate. And, of course, sunscreen and any kind of um, chafing cream like Body Glide or some others that will uh, prevent... Um, any chafing. So make sure you bring that as well, especially if you're wearing a wetsuit and put that around your neck um, because your, your neck can really get chafed up. So keep that in mind. And then for your pre and post race, you want to make sure that you're, you bring clothes that are comfortable. If it is chilly, bring a warm up, you know, bring long pants, bring a jacket. Um, it might be chilly after the race too, and you're going to want to hang out. So bring clothes that are going to make you comfortable, extra shoes, nutrition for immediately after the race, They'll have some snacks most likely at the end as well. Um, again, I've said your, your sunscreen, and then, of course, remember to hand back in your timing chip. Okay? Um, all right, so Kelly and Abby, do you guys have anything to add to this slide? No, I think you did a great job. Um, I'll reiterate bringing a water bottle, especially on the bike course. There's not an aid station out on the bike course. There's aid station um, leaving the transition area for you to refill a water bottle or get anything there. And there's one on the run course, um, but just make sure you have something for the bike course if you've been training with something. Perfect. Great advice. All right, now let's talk about race morning. I, I kind of got into that a little bit, but let's go dive a little bit deeper into race morning. So first of all, you want to get up early. I mentioned that earlier. Um, if you're not used to getting up early, try to schedule yourself your internal clock so you can get up early without a problem. And I usually recommend two to three hours before your race start. And again, make sure that you have a normal routine, whatever that means to you. Get to the transition or get to the race one to one and a half hours before your wave. I always try to get there at least an hour and a half because you never know what's going to happen. Uh, there's so many moving parts to a triathlon. You just want to be prepared and make sure that you have plenty of time to take care of a problem if something arises. And, you know, in all probability, nothing will happen, but you just want to get there in plenty of time so that you can get set up, make sure your tires are inflated, you know, all those little things, and then be part of the experience. Just kind of mill around, hang out, go go by yourself, put your music on, um, listen to your favorite um, tunes that get you motivated and excited, and just get in your own world, but be part of the whole experience. There's also um, the, the need to know the flow of the transition area. That's really important because if you don't know the flow, meaning where do you come in on the swim and run to your bike? Where is your bike rack? Is it the fifth bike rack in on the left side, and is your bike the fifth bike in the row? I mean, there's all these questions, right? And all these bikes will look somewhat alike on race day. So really do a good job of walking the transition area and remembering the flow. 
where you go with the bike to exit the transition area, and then when you come in off the bike, where do you rack your bike again? Because guess what? The bike won't be there. Only your stuff on the ground will be there, and if you don't know where your transition area is, you're going to be running around wasting a lot of time. So do whatever you can to walk the transition area in the morning, know the flow, and that way you'll be really prepared when things get a little bit more anxious. You know, race time is, um, you know, you get a little bit of anxiety. You're excited. You're fired up. And sometimes you overlook things because of that. So um, keep, it, keep that in mind and make your mental notes, as I mentioned. Okay, warm up. And that's really important because do you ever do a workout without warming up a little bit? I don't. I don't do it. I mean, I always warm up as much as I can before a workout. It just gets the body ready and makes you feel better when you start the activity. So I would recommend doing a little warm up. Doesn't have to be a lot, but something to increase your heart rate, get that heart rate up, and um, just get your body ready for that race, um, for the race. You know, for the gun to go off, so that you are warm and ready to go. And, Warm-up can mean anything from going for a little jog um, before the race, doing some stretching. I think that's really important. Um, some people will actually do some like isometric squats or prisoner squats or lunges just to warm up their quads and their glutes called dynamic stretching. And, uh, and some people really like to warm up for the swim as well. And I'm not sure if that's a possibility in this race, Kelly. Is it a possibility to get in before the wave or no? Um, because we're going to be going in waves, there's not going to be a warm-up area. We will have the indoor leisure pool open if you want to just kind of swim around. That's just kind of the, um, it's the leisure pool that's a little bit more open. There's not necessarily laps in there just because we're going to have the heats going in the two lap pools. But if you want to do a little, a little swimming around, you can in the leisure pool. Perfect. Okay. Good. So that's something that's individual. Some people like to warm up. Some people don't don't really need to. So just, that's up to you. Um, but do a little stretching. You know, just get your body ready for that race. And then you line up according to your wave, which uh, Kelly will go over in greater detail, and you go. And again, sticking to our theme, you can do this. Just relax, take a deep breath, and just remember that you can do this. You've trained hard. You're ready for it. Now it's time to go. All right, so let's talk about go time. So you want to start off in quotes, easy. Now, easy means different things to different people. My point here is don't start off as if you're doing a sprint. Just don't do it. And I don't care if you're a top professional athlete or somebody's doing their first race. It's always a bad idea to start off as if it's a sprint because if you do that, you're going to burn your matches, okay? That's a great analogy I like to use. We all have a matchbook of efforts, and our matchbooks are only so big, and if we run through our matches, our matchbook too soon in the event, we're not going to have any matches left for the finish. So you want to make sure that you are uh, starting off easy and just gradually build your intensity to whatever you want to do. It might be easy the whole race for you, and that's fine. Or it might be a, a, a strategy where you start off easy, and then okay, and then you say to yourself, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to pick it up now. I've been swimming a few laps. I'm ready to pick it up. And then you start really swimming tempo, you know, and that you're pushing the pace. And the same might be on the bike. Start the bike off, spinning your legs, getting loose for the first five minutes. And then you're like, okay, I'm ready to go. I'm warmed up. And then you go to that big chain ring on the front, down to that 13 or 12 on the back, and boom, you're starting to go fast. So your strategy is up to you, but just keep in mind you want to start off easy. Stay in your comfort zone. Really important, stay in that comfort zone, whatever that means to you. Stick with your race strategy, but also be open to modifying it because things can happen out there. So you need to make sure that if something does happen, you can um, change on the fly, change your strategy a little bit on the fly. Focus on your nutrition and your hydration, especially hydration. I think that's probably more important than consuming calories in this um, shorter event. But... There's, some, there's some boys in the background. <laughs> she wants to join the other So make sure that you uh, serve your matches. And the other point is to race your race. Um, really important piece here. You're going to have a lot of different ability levels 
And it's really easy to get sucked into the whole idea of, I want to go faster. I just want to push myself, and I want to go super fast. But then you get out of that comfort zone, and you get into somebody else's comfort zone, which might be a lot higher than yours and a lot faster than yours. And then all of a sudden, you're burning through all your matches. So don't do that. Race your race. This is a an individual event. It's you against you. So make sure that you keep that in mind. Um, smile and joy and have gratitude for the fact that you're out there participating in this awesome sport. You know, you're healthy, you're fit, and you're doing a triathlon. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. I think that's really important. And finally, have fun. And once again, our theme, you can do this. Just have that inner confidence that you can get through this event no matter what. All right, now we're going to go right into our bike course details. And uh, Kelly, I'm going to hand it over to you. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're controlling this, you want to go to the next slide first. And I'm going to go over the duathlon course first, starting with the run. And then I'll go over the triathlon course because they are, you know, a little bit different. So the duathlon um Here's the, the first um, run course. It's going to be a two-mile run, about a 13-mile bike, and a two-mile run. So you guys are going to be starting at the Lifetime Fitness location. So you'll see on the map, you can kind of see just south of that little green square, there's Century Middle School. That's where everyone's going to be parking. So, you know, another thing to keep in mind on race, race day um, preparation, going through, you know, planning out where you're going to park. And that parking lot's really big, and we rent it out just for all the racers. So um, it's super close to the starting line. So you'll want to be sure um, to note that. And then the transition area for do athletes is actually up at Eastview Elementary School, which is where that little red square is. Um, so we will have an optional bike check-in on Saturday when we go over the schedule. We can talk more about it too. But um, what that is, is on packet pickup day, that Saturday before the race, you can come and actually drop off your bike and gear at transition so that you don't have to do it that morning if you don't want to. Um, so if you want to on Saturday, drop your bike, drop your helmet, drop your shoes, get everything set up so that you can go straight to the starting line on race day, you're more than welcome to. It's optional, so you don't have to, but um, it's a nice convenient thing that we offer this year. So, so do athletes, you're going to come to the starting line at Lifetime Fitness at, um, you know, try to get there about a half hour before the race just so that you can be there in time, make sure you're hearing all the announcements, go to going to the bathroom. Um, your race is going to start at 7.30 a.m. So um, we're going to line you up at um, in waves kind of according to your pace. And then we'll start you off at about 100 to 200 women at a time just so that it doesn't um, – so that you guys have space on the race course and it doesn't get too crowded right away. So you're going to go and you're going to run, you're going to start running on the path behind Lifetime Fitness and you're going to go up to Dodd and into the neighborhoods and end your two mile run at Eastview Elementary. So you'll have an aid station at kind of the halfway point of the, the run and the run is, you know, relatively flat. It's a great idea to drive this run course on Expo Day. So, you know, you have to go to the Lifetime Club on Saturday anyway to pick up your packet. So it's a great idea to drive the courses the day before the race as well so that you, you know, if you're not from the area, you kind of get a feel for what you're going to be doing the next day. So you'll go and then you'll finish your run at Eastfield Elementary School and then you can uh, go back to the bike course page, the slide before, and you're going to transition at Eastfield Elementary School onto your bike. Um, now do athletes, your bike is a little bit shorter than the triathletes and I'll explain that in a bit. Troy, do you want to go to the bike slide? Thanks. So you guys are going to be doing this bike course clockwise. I know that's a big question we get a lot. Um, so you're going to be going going out and you'll notice if you've done this race before, it is a new bike course and we're really excited about this. Last year I think our bike course was a little challenging. So this is um, a lot more beginner friendly, a um, little less hilly, which I'm sure a lot of people are excited about. There's um, about three good hills on the course, um, nothing too too crazy, but um, it is something to be aware of. So again, that day before to go and drive the race course is such a great idea. Um, 
This is a an open bike course, so what that means is that we will only have half of the road, so there's going to be traffic going on on part of the road. So it's really important to kind of be aware of things. We're going to have a lot of volunteers and a lot of um, police support out on the race course, but um, you know it's always a good idea just to play it safe and make sure that you keep your head up. Um, we don't allow headphones for safety reasons, so just be aware of that as well. Don't bring your headphones for the bike. Um, so that's the race course. If you guys have any specific questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. It's it's a pretty standard race um, bike course. I did talk to the city of Lakeville earlier this week, and they are going to um, sweep the streets for our courses before the race, which is so nice of them. The city of Lakeville is just so supportive of this event. So if you're out there and you're kind of testing the bike course, if you're practicing on it, just be aware that it is going to be a lot cleaner on race day. Um, I know there's some some sand there from leftover from the winter. Um, and then do athletes, you'll do the bike course and you'll end at Eastview Elementary School again and then you'll do that same run course backwards. So you'll hit that aid station again and then you'll finish at the Lifetime Fitness. So now the difference between the triathlon and the duathlon, the triathletes, you know, you're going to be swimming for your first leg. So you're going to be starting at Lifetime Fitness, but you're also going to be finishing that first leg at Lifetime Fitness as well. So you're going to have two transition areas. So your transition one area is going to have your bike gear. So when you come out of the pool, there's going to be bike racks on the pool deck and your bikes will be there on, you know, you'll set them up before and optional bike check in the day before is available to the triathletes as well. But you're going to get out of the pool after you do your 200 um, meter swim. You're going to hop on your bike at Lifetime Fitness. And it's not shown on this course, but on the website, you'll see that there's a little addition to the bike course for you guys because you're going to be, instead of starting at the Eastview Elementary School like the do athletes, you're going to be starting at Lifetime. So you're going to come out exiting the Lifetime parking lot on Dodd, going south on Dodd, over over to 185th Street, and then you're just going to hook on to the duathlon course and join those duathletes in that bike course going counterclockwise. So you'll be racing with the duathletes from there on out. And then when you're finished um, with that bike course, you're actually going to go into your transition two area. So this area, you're going to want to set up all your run stuff, and that's going to be with the duathlon um, transition area. So this is going to be at the Eastview Elementary School. You're going to drop your bike there, get your run gear, and then do the do the run that the duathletes do going back to the Lifetime Fitness Club. So it's a little more complicated with the triathletes because you're going to have two transition areas. So you just want to be sure to set up all your bike gear at transition one and all your run gear at transition two. Then we can kind of go on to the schedule of events. So what does event weekend actually look like? Um, like I mentioned, we do have the, um, this is kind of a big change from last year is we are going to have this um, expo day the day before. So Saturday, May 21st, we're going to have the expo and packet pickup at Lakeville Lifetime Fitness um, from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. So you'll want to be, um, be sure that you bring your photo ID so that you can pick up your packet. Um, and you, we do allow you to pick up your friend's packet. Just um, bring a picture of their photo ID and we will, we're more than happy to give those to you. We're going to have the optional bike check-in if you want to, you know, drop that off the day before and not think about it on race day, that's fine. We are having athlete meetings this year, so at 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock, we highly recommend you guys attend, especially if it's your first time racing, to attend one of these course talks because we'll be going over, you know, the course in detail if anything comes up, maybe there's a pothole that's kind of newer on the course at mile five, we'll warn you about those type of things. Um, if there's weather in the forecast, we'll talk about that. We'll answer any questions for athletes. It's just a great great place to, to get any last minute information that you need. Um, it's also really great because Specialized, our national bike sponsor, is actually going to do a fix a flat um, clinic after after we go over the course talk, so at probably about 3.45 and 5.45 if you want to plan on that. And these are open to the public, but they're going to be doing a beginner's, you know, how to change a flat clinic, which is going to be pretty pretty cool to see. 
Um, so this day too, you know, it's really great to go and check out your transition area. Troy talked about visualizing and kind of walking through that transition area. You know, really schedule your day to have some time at the expo to, you know, have fun with it, walk around, visit our sponsors, get some free freebies, but also to really prep for your race and go check out where is your transition area, where, where are you going to be coming in, where are you going to be going out, you know, drive the race course, kind of make, make a little day of this as well. So what you're going to receive on race day, um, it's going to be a packet of, of a whole lot of stickers pretty much. Um, and we are more than happy to show you on race day if you're still confused, but you're going to, you're going to get an athlete wristband. So this is something that allows you into the transition area. We only allow athletes into the transition area so that everyone's bike and helmet are all safe in there. Um, so everyone's going to be assigned a number and all of your numbers are going to match. So you're going to get a wristband that says, you know, 200, and you're going to get um, a race bib that is going to also say 200, and a sticker for your bike that says 200, and a sticker for your helmet that says 200, so that our security guards at transition make sure that you're leaving with the right, um, all the right equipment, and nobody's having any mix-ups. So it's really important to wear your athlete wristband throughout the whole day so that after the event you can get back into transition and get your equipment back out. You're also going to get a timing chip and it's super important to wear this um, on race day. A because you know it's, it's what timing it's what's timing you but also so that we know that you're safe on the race course. It's how we keep track of all the athletes. So if for some reason it falls off or anything just be sure to tell um, a volunteer or race staff when you finish. You'll also get your participant moxie tank top. So the day before you're going to get this. So it's a great option to wear during the race if you want. I know a lot of people like to wear that during the race. Um, the stickers for the helmet and bike, like I said, your race bib. Um, again, it's optional to wear on the bike, uh, mandatory for the run. I would say for the duathlon, just wear it the entire time. That way you don't have to worry about it. Um, and again, with the race bib, be sure to have it on the front, um, just kind of over your stomach. Um, this is something that we use as a backup timing tool, but we also use it to tag your photos and after. So the Vision Council is so great. They're hopping on and providing all of you guys with free athlete photos. So we're going to have photographers out on course, at the finish line, kind of at the starting line, taking pictures of you guys. And we hand take all those pictures according to your race bib. So it's important that we're able to see your race bib so that we can take you and your free photos and you guys can download those and share them on social media. You can also get wristbanded if you plan to enjoy our bubbly bar after the event um, with champagne and mimosas. Um, you can get wristbanded the day before the race or on race day if you prefer. And then your goodie bag with sponsor inserts um, and then for the triathlon, you'll get your swim cap as well. And um, for a lot of triathlons, you, there's a lot of different colors of swim caps, and that's by wave. But for this triathlon, everyone's going to be getting just one color of the swim cap. Um, and then safety pins to put your race bib on. So if you have any questions about any of those on race day, just feel free to ask a volunteer. So the schedule on race day, it's it's a bright and early morning, like Troy said, you know, it's important to kind of get your body used to waking up at that time if you're not necessarily um, used to it already. So we'll have transition open from 5 a.m. to 6.15 a.m. If you don't choose to drop your bike and your gear the day before, um, be sure to leave yourself enough time especially do athletes because you're going to be um, dropping your stuff at transition at the east the East Vale Elementary School, and then it is about a you know a 600 meter walk back to Lifetime Fitness. So I would plan for you know 15 minutes to walk to the starting line um, because they are in two separate locations. And then the triathlon starts at 7 a.m. and the duathlon starts at 7:30 a.m. So just be aware of that. And duathletes, um, your starting line is right outside the pool. So um, I would suggest if you're hanging out and you're just kind of wasting time, come cheer on the triathletes. I know a lot of people; it's going to be their first time. So a little a little cheering at the beginning always goes a long way. And then the post-race event, we'll have lots of um, we'll have 
uh, breakfast snacks, like I said, the mimosa. We'll have our life spa out there doing mini manicures and massages. Um, so really, you know, leave time to stick around and enjoy enjoy and celebrate your, your race and your accomplishment and the journey that have brought you here. And you guys have all come a long way and done so much training. So be sure to celebrate afterwards. And our award ceremony for our, um, our top athletes are at, is at 1045. All right, Kelly, thanks very much for that uh, great explanation. Um, really great. And, again, we'll open up for some Q&A towards the end for anybody who has some additional questions uh, for Kelly. So I just want to mention this slide is about different training opportunities uh, that you can take advantage of at Lifetime. Uh, we have our own internal coaching group. It's called Lifetime Endurance, and we offer a variety of services, including one-on-one -on -one coaching, custom training plan development, and even group training, which we call our tri-team program. So you can join the Lifetime tri-team, and uh, it's a, they meet three days a week, and they train together, and they have social events together, and they go to races together, and it's for everybody. It's for athletes of all levels, and it's just a way to have fun and really get involved in the sport. So if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to email me directly, or you can go to lifetimeendurance.com and get some more information. Or if you are a Lifetime member already, just go to your fitness services desk uh, and, and say, you know, I'm interested in Tri-Team. Do you have a coach here? And we will find a coach for you. So uh, hopefully you can join some of our programs. Abby, would you like to take this slide? Yeah, big thanks, you know, to Troy and Kelly. You guys have shared tons of in helpful information for us today. And uh, we just wanted to touch on our overarching theme for season four, which is Be Your Potential. And the message behind Be Your Potential can be applied to many aspects of your life. And we're leaving it up to you to apply it into your journey, however you see it fits best. So we encourage you, you know, on race day to share your inspiration and success stories on our Gildan and Frida She, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever social media channel you choose. And just know that, you know, Gildan and Frida She was designed to live beyond the finish line as a community of active women who are all shared by a connected passion and desire to celebrate the healthy way of life through sisterhood and strength. And so let's rally our tribes and work together to inspire as many women as we can to become better versions of themselves by pushing each other to be our limitless potential. And uh, then we'll go ahead and go to the next slide. And just remember, as you cross the finish line, not only to throw your hands up in the air and celebrate because you did it, but also smile and, you know, enjoy the journey. You'll get your medal, you'll pause for a photo, and then head to the post-race party where we have our lifestyle market. And uh, we'll look forward to raising a glass of bubbly at the race with you. And we can go ahead and pass it back over to Kelly, as I know she has uh, some exciting Moxie Color Block heat giveaways. Yeah, so as a thank you kind of for hopping on, you know, it's it's we all love putting on these uh, webinars and beginner clinics because the more informed you guys are as athletes, the better experience you're going to have and the more confident you're going to feel on race day. So, you know, we, we love giving you this information and, you know, we hope that you guys pass on the information you learned here today to other people you're racing with or people who might um, decide to race in the future. So. Um, so we, we will have a giveaway, but I see a question just came up. Your pool is in uh, your pool is in your We will get that changed. So the pool is in yards, so we're gonna change that to a two hundred yard swim. So it's gonna be eight laps in the pools, in the outdoor pool and the indoor pool. Um so how the swim is gonna work. Um yeah, this is a great question. I know a lot of people have questions about the swim. So we're going to have the two pools going, and it's going to work very similar to our indoor triathlons, if anyone's um, done our indoor triathlons. But we're going to have um, 10 people per wave, and we're going to put two people in each lane. So um, we're going to start each wave, and um, you're going to be starting in the pool, so there will be no um, blocks or anything. Um, it's going to be just a hand on the wall, and we'll have a starter in each of the pool locations, and you'll start, and all 10 of the people will start, and we'll have volunteers at the lanes counting your laps. 
So um, just in case you lose count, we'll have a volunteer there as well. Um, you're also going to have your chip. So the chip is going to be activated when we start each wave. So um, that's kind of how we're not timing with a stopwatch or anything. It is all chip timed. So once your wave starts, your chip is going and you're going to cross a map mat when you get out of the water that is going to kind of time your swim time to your transition one time. So that's kind of how that's going to work. Um, we're going to have everyone kind of lining up in the pool and going into waves by age groups, which we will send out in the pre-race email, and it'll be in the athlete guide that will come out probably next Friday is when I believe we have our um, pre-race email scheduled to go out, otherwise that following Monday. But probably May 13th we'll have all the waves assigned. So you will get a wave assignment. Um, that's detailed out beforehand so you'll know when you're going um, and what pool you're in. And we are limiting it. I see somebody asked how many triathletes do we have. Um, with this being the first year, we are limiting it just to 200 triathletes. So we sold that out at just 200. Um, I believe we have, I think, 13 spots left if anyone does want to um, join it. But we'll have 200 triathletes. So um, there, it's a very limited number to kind of test this out and, and see how it, it works with uh, this space. Um, we're excited for it because a lot of people have been begging us, turn this into a triathlon. So um, we're really excited for it. We've, we've done events like this at our that have been a pool swim and an outdoor bike and run. So we are familiar with the logistics on this. We do it at the Kids Tri Plymouth event with 450 people. So um, 200 uh, should be pretty quick. So how do you uh, decide? Some, yep. Oh. So if you see we have some questions. Ingrid asked, is the triathlon bike also clockwise? Yes. Yep, okay. so the triathlon bike and the duathlon bike are the same. They both go clockwise. Um, and then how do you decide if you're indoor or outdoor pool? Um, it's going to be completely randomly assigned just because um, we want to keep it fair for everyone, so it will be randomly assigned. Um, assigned. And that, again, will come out in the athlete guide and the pre-race email. So if you leave your gear overnight in the transition, will it be protected from the weather? Unfortunately, if if the weather's looking a little rough that weekend, which hopefully it will be 70 and sunny, but um, if it is looking really windy or really rainy, um, you know, maybe that's it's not a good idea to put your stuff the night before. Um, we're doing this as a convenience to you guys, so, so hopefully the weather will be nice. Um, but if it's not, you know, it's up to you. It's your decision. If it's windy, be sure to, you know, have everything kind of weighted down with either a water bottle or your or your shoes. Um, if it's rainy, you know, some people will put their who still want to put their stuff out will put it in plastic bags. Um, I know the triathletes. You're going to be coming out of the swim, so it doesn't really matter if your stuff is wet. It's more just protecting your gear for for quality and maintenance. We will have security overnight. I know that's another question that kind of goes along with um, the optional bike gear check-in. So um, I, I always tell people that it's it's very safe. We have security guards um, at both transition areas, so it will be secure. We have to drive back and take four hours in the car for one game. We have a lot of them. Yeah. Okay. These, are, these are great questions. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if more questions come up, I will put my email address here. But my point is, if it's like six people on the team, they would go. But it's like 11 kids on the team. I'm like this. Lacking so I just I just messaged out my email address. If any more questions come up, um, my first one's feel free webinar. to to type it up or to send us your anyway, questions. No, just thank you everyone for jumping on tonight. She doesn't swim. And, uh, like Kelly much. said, you know, if you guys have any questions, as, don't as have for like exercise. exercise. We want to make sure you go into the and happy. Okay. Yep. Well, Perfect. Okay. Then we're going to close the call now.
Um, once again, thanks everybody uh, for being on the call. We really oh appreciate God. it. We look forward to uh, oh a God. great experience for you on race day. So if you have any questions, let us know. Hours to Otherwise, good luck with your training, and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. And I, I do have the Moxie giveaway now. If we've stopped the recording, I've got the Moxie giveaway. So.